Good morning, YouTube. Today, we have something special for you. We have three McLarens, and we're gonna do the McLaren versus McLaren versus McLaren video. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And today, we've got a McLaren 650S Spider. We've got the McLaren 570S, no spider, and the 720S Spider. So we've got Almost a million dollars in McLarens in my garage right now, which is pretty insane. Believe it or not, right now, that actually is the cheapest one, which doesn't make sense because this is not as good as that. But, yeah, I mean, so just saying, like, your money goes further there. And then you got the crazy shit over here, which we, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. If you'd like to support our channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and go check out our website, normalguyssupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your supercar. That man right there will fulfill your order. With joy. <laughs> He'll be like, oh, happy day. I get to fulfill an order. By the way, these two are for sale through our dealership. That one is not, but we did sell it through our dealership, NG Supercars. So if you'd like to make it. We ripped him off. We screwed. <laughs> this dumbass bought this car from us thinking he got a good deal. Oh, let me tell you, he actually kind of did. So <laughs> I say it's by, by like over 20 grand. <laughs> Go check out our website, NG Supercars, or send us an email, sales at ngsupercars.com. Okay, McLaren fans, you have your day. Here it is. We thought this would be a pretty cool video because not every day you get to compare the full array of McLaren cars. So obviously this is the big bad boy. This sucker has an MSRP of over $380,000. This guy's got an MSRP of somewhere north of $200,000. We're not 100% sure on the price tag. We think it's maybe about two twenty-five. dollars And this car, the MSRP was, I believe, about $290 something, I think. Or is it $280? It was up there. So obviously the Spider option makes these two cost a lot more. You can get the 570 in a Spider, and of course that does increase the price quite a bit. But the crazy thing is that these are kind of supposed to be the budget supercar, and that is a whole lot of car for your money, let me tell you. I actually just filmed the review for it this morning, which you go watch that on our channel. Jeez, this is a lot of car for the round $200,000 category. But why don't we start with, well, Let's start with you, because you're the oldest. So this is kind of the extension of the MP412C, which has the world's worst name, and then they came up with the much better name, 650S, which of course is supposed to be representation of approximate horsepower, approximately 650. It's actually, I think, like 630 or 40. But of course, if you actually dyno these things, they actually came out with like 680. So really, <laughs> it's all over the place. But this is the original McLaren production car just in its second form. So the MP412C and the 650 actually share a lot of the same parts, like literally the exact same parts. Some of them were evolutions of the same parts. And we were discussing what's the real difference between these three and why is there such a substantial price difference and what makes one better over the other over the other. So we can talk about a few things that uh, obviously this gets you that you don't get in this. And the first thing would be that the active suspension in this has all the accumulators and all that stuff. And let me tell you, when you change the driving modes of the 650, it is extremely noticeable. Like it goes from being completely soft and squishy and enjoyable to being a rock hard, like I'm gonna go kill you on the track kind of setup. Another thing that you don't get on this uh, seven or the 570 is the active arrow. So you have the active wing that moves around, does the air brake and all that fun stuff. It uses the DCT system. So all of that's pretty complicated, costs a pretty good amount of money. Basically, this is the same engine that's in that. This is just tuned to be more performance. 50 more horsepower or even more than that than the 570. So, but same block, same basic design. One thing I can tell you from experience is the interior of the, of the 650 is much nicer and larger. So you have way more room in the 650 than you do in the 570. The 570 is a bit crammed in there. Actually, uh, Tyler just pointed out something that's fairly astute, which is that the grates for the radiators don't exist on the 570 and the 720. So you can see like you've got these grates. It's not, obviously that's not gonna stop something that's massive or heavy, it's gonna blow right through the grate. It's, you know, it doesn't feel like it's super sturdy, but 
I can tell you that we were on a trip one time and a guy had a 570 and something flew up and hit his radiator and poked a hole in it. So we stopped and it was literally pissing coolant out about two feet in front of the car and he couldn't make it home because of that. So I think that that grate actually could be helpful in some circumstances, obviously not all, but uh, the thing that Tyler was saying is you could actually get in there and clean these out. So that's probably also a benefit. So we're just kind of noticing how there's like different strategies for the aerodynamics of these cars and simple things like there's air vents right here on the 570 that obviously are venting out this, but it still has like coolant ducting behind it for the radiators. Also, you've got this like bridge right here on the door where you can stick your hand through. And then of course you got a big air scoop right there. The air scoop on the 650 you can see is much lower and over here on the 720, it's kind of like in the door. So I mean, it's a, that's a huge air scoop, but it's all right here. One of the problems with this is that, well, you can see it actually goes through the door, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, there's a bunch of crud in there that probably needs to be cleaned out once in a while so I could see where that would happen. More venting right there in the 720, ventilation right there. It kind of scoops in from the front. You got this weird, look at this thing. Yeah, you can actually stick your hand through right there on the blinker intake right there. So, I mean, there's just, aerodynamic features all over the place on these cars. They are very interesting designs. And you know, the, the cool thing is that all three of them have different strategies on where the ducks are and how they scoop in the air and things like that. So we even have more scoops like right back here on the 720. We we're just popping the trunks and his still has the safety latch. Like, you know, so it's got the secondary latch. Yeah, pretty good sized frunk on the uh, 650. You actually were able to fit like a suitcase in there and take it on a road trip. 570 looks a little bit smaller. It's got a bigger indent right there. Mm -hmm. This definitely is shorter. It definitely is like less space front to back. And over here in the 720, looks like actually it might be the biggest one. Yeah. All right, so to get the 720 up, you got a button right here in the door. Haha, -ha. so to get it up, <laughs> yes. You have the carbon fiber tub is exposed and you got the nice Alcantara seats. Believe it or not, it's the same steering wheel in all three of these. It's basically the same screen in all three of these. Same basic controls uh, as far as like your infotainment and air conditioner and stuff. So it's going to be familiar in all of them. Another thing that McLaren likes to do is hide buttons on the back sides of the doors. So you can see we've got tonneau cover. You can actually let's see. Oh, oh, there it goes. See, we actually have more storage back there if you uh, so choose. This is a great place to put your weed. I mean, never mind. <laughs> it's actually, it's not even that funny anymore because it's legal in half the country. Yeah. So whatever. Well, that would have been a good place to put your weed, but that's, that's a lot of space. I mean, you could fit, I don't know, a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, two jackets. maybe two jackets. A whole lot of weed. I mean, definitely exceeding the legal limits. All right. For the 570, you've got a button right here. Push it and the door comes open sadly this is not the spider so i can't demonstrate the tonneau cover there's no external weed storage on this car uh, but you can see very similar styling very simple that's it literally the same steering wheel you got the same infotainment basic display you've got similar ventilation uh similar buttons and everything but of course your tub is covered in carpet in this one so you don't have all the exposed carbon fiber it's a little bit more simple of an interior and you've got leather as opposed to alcantara so you know even the leather quality you'll see compared to the 650 is not quite as good hi tyler hi he's gonna demonstrate something cool that i did not know about yeah i didn't know about this either uh the mclaren forums the only place i've learned about this there is a secret touch panel so the 650 got rid of the stupid swipe thing there's an actual yeah. button but there's still a hidden touch panel on this car you put four fingers right here and it locks the car and yeah Oh, folds them. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. I am. And then if you double press the unlock button, it just pops the door. So you don't. Have to oh, push it the actually button. pops it. Yeah. I wonder if the other ones do that. So you can see here's the button to activate the door on the 650, and of course, as you can see, exact same steering wheel. It's got actually the interesting thing is the carbon fiber in this is more of a gloss than a matte. So it's a matte carbon fiber in the others. I don't know if that's just a a difference in options. I bet you have options of gloss or matte, uh, but you see same basic screen, same basic controls, only one AC vent in the middle, which is a little bit weird thing. I know they, they swept that out. Uh, the leather feels 
of a higher quality than it does in the 570. Like this feels softer, more pliable touch to it. You can see the carbon fiber chassis in this one is of course covered up in uh, carpet as well. Full bridge on the center console as opposed to like a gap there. And underneath it is where they put your, your drink uh, cup holders, which is really kind of impractical. And we do have the Tanu option here. Yay! And this one's a lot deeper. I feel like you could fit. Ha! <laughs> Can't do shit around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was, that was even better. You can actually fit a lot of stuff in that. You might even fit, fit like a small bag. A lot better than the jacket in the other one. So apparently if you double press the unlock, yep, it pops the door. That's pretty cool. So from the back, you've got the 720 with the center ex exhaust, which is more of a throwback to the original 600 or 650 design of that MP412C. You got a huge carbon fiber diffuser. You can actually look in there and see the transmission. It's kind of crazy. So it's pretty exposed back there. Here in the 570, you've got more of a standard dual exit exhaust in the two corners. Again, pretty large diffuser though. And you can still see parts of the, of the engine, like you can actually stick your hand right in there and probably burn the shit out of yourself, so don't do that. And finally, we've got the 650 with the, the center exit exhaust, which actually started all off. It was really cool on the 12C, love that. Not quite as an aggressive looking diffuser, but it is quite large. It doesn't have a bunch of fins and stuff. So obviously, they decided to dial up the drama on the diffusers in the later models. 570, you have no way to really access the engine, but you push that little button there and woohoo, you get this tiny little door. It's so cute. And you can access, well, you can add oil and check your coolant, but that's all you get, nothing else. So on the 650, we have an actual tiny little hood. I mean, if you want to call it a hood, yay. And look at, you got oil over there and coolant in the center and you can kind of see the engine. So yeah, can actually do something there. Still not exactly user-friendly from the top of the car, but we could tell you from working on these things, actually the bottom's much easier to work on these things anyway. And on the 720, you get nothing, like literally nothing, nothing opens. There's no panel, no nothing. This is bolted down. Uh, there, there you go. That's, that's it. Don't, don't go in there. <laughs> you'll, you'll get nothing. Okay, enough, enough standing around, let's go drive them. Now, one thing is, having driven all three of these cars, I can tell you the transmissions behave basically the same. You do not feel a difference in the transmissions. You do feel difference, obviously, in the power levels and, of course, on the handling. The handling is very, very sharp in the 720 and the 650. And because the 570 does have a different suspension, it's just a slight bit looser. Now, it's not anything bad. I mean, still supercar levels of performance and handling, but it's just not quite up to the, what these cars can do, what this 5.7 or the 6.50 and the 7.20 can do. You've got too many numbers. The big thing about this one is just the power is just dramatically more than the other two. Now, go from the 5.70 to the 6.50, it's a huge bump in power, way more powerful. Then to go from the 6.50 to the 7.20, is a huge bump of power. Good turbo noises out of all these cars to get some good sound. Not a whole lot of turbo lag, although it is there. It's not terrible. But again, these, these shifts just so, so crisp and sharp. So when you put the pedal down in the 570, you're smiling, you're laughing, you're having a good time. You put the pedal down in the 650, you're smiling, you're a little bit concerned. Your life may be like start flashing before your eyes. You put your set, pedal down in the 720, you go, Jesus, what have I done? All right, here we go. Ready? Let's see how fast we can catch this truck. <laughs> Holy shit. That is just so <laughs> powerful. <laughs> Spinning the tires pretty hard through third gear in that. Oh, that's so, so awesome. If you got the money, hate to say it, you have to have this thing just because it's so absurd. It just doesn't make any sense. The 650, honestly, I think is the sweet spot. It's powerful enough, but it's at a great price right now. And it's got all of the good things about the 720, just a slightly less package. Uh, we'll catch up to this truck again. Good Lord. So the tires are cold. It's only like 70 degrees on the tires. And I just spun them going 65. 
it's just the, this car keeps you on your toes. You can't not pay attention when you drive this car. You can't just like, oh, la la la, we're gonna go put the hammer down. Nope, you got to be on your game. Absolutely ridiculous car, and of course it does look the most spaceshipy, and it's just the most outrageous styling. Okay, let's try not to get too squirrely here. And we're gone. Wow, I can actually hear the wind coming off of the air brake. That was cool. That's the only problem with these cars. They are so outrageously fast. There's almost nowhere you can drive them anywhere remotely close to the limits. And even on the track, I would be scared to shit to drive this thing near the limits. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm fully ready to admit, I am not a good enough driver at this point to drive this at the limits. This is beyond my capability. This is beyond the capabilities of 99% of the people out there, probably 99.9% .9 of the people out there. I know you guys all think you're badass drivers. You get in this, you will piss yourself the first time you try driving it because good God, without the computer, I would have been in a ditch right there. I mean, that spun the tires so hard. Rule number one, don't stab the gas on a corner. You will die. Rule number two, leave traction control on at all times. You are not that good. I think that's pretty much it. The rest of it's hang on. All right, YouTube. We are in the 570S. It's a great car. It is a smaller car if you're a bigger fella like me. The other two are a little bit bigger and more comfortable, but it doesn't change the fact that is an awesome car to be driving. Everybody talks about how these things are soulless or whatever, and that Ferraris have more soul than McLaren, that's a bunch of crap. I just think that these are better cars. More fun cars, not better cars. Um, just more fun, like just the shifts are so crisp and fast, it's ridiculous. One thing that I really like about these that are cool, and this is maybe one of those smaller details that not anybody else really cares about, but these paddles are actually interconnected in the center, so they're kind of, um, it's like a toggle switch rather than just like an independent switch um, for the left and for the right side. Because if you look, I can upshift with my left hand, so I'll take my um, hand off. And see, I can go, I can make it go up to fifth gear, sixth gear by pushing the paddle. And alternatively, I can push the right side one and get it to downshift. So I think that that's a cool little thing that they do. It's similar to how F1 cars are. The brakes in these things are great as you would expect. The downshifts are stupid fast. The upshifts are even dumber, faster. Good grammar there. The blind spots aren't that bad, actually. Kind of impressed with that. That lady is a bro, letting us go. Woo! Got a little sideways there. You go very fast, very quickly. Very quickly. The brakes are pretty good in this thing. In any other car, you would say that the brakes are fantastic in this but it is noticeable that this car doesn't have the active arrow like the other two cars do. Um, you do lose out on quite a bit of um, braking power with them. I love that you can hear the turbos in McLarens. You can't hear the turbo in most cars. You can't hear the turbos in my car in the 911 turbo when the turbo is in the name. This has only about 570 horsepower. Let me tell you, 570 horsepower? is plenty fast. Plenty fast. I can see the the rear wing on Tyler's car shoot up when he steps on the brake. Apart from the noticeable difference in braking that you get from it, I think it's cool as hell that it moves and actuates because it does it so fast. On my uh, dashboard, I have like little shift lights like you get in a Formula One car. They go green, red, blue. And then I believe you even get a little auditory beep too. Yep, you get a beep, which is cool. Let you know so that you don't have to be looking down. One cool thing that Ferrari does that McLaren doesn't is uh, the shift lights in the steering wheel. The Ferraris are cool as hell. McLaren could learn from that. That would be cool to see. 
Um, but the auditory beep helps when you can't always see uh, what's going on. so planted and so well built that I'm doing exactly the speed limit right now and it feels like I'm doing like 30 miles an hour. I know that they kind of have a stigma, whatever. I think that stigma of unreliability is overblown. Yeah, they had some issues when they first came out, but what car manufacturer doesn't have issues when they come out, first come out? Or even what different models don't have issues when it's a brand new model? I think that a lot of the hate that McLaren gets is uh, not justified, and I think that they're fantastic cars. What'd you think? Oh, you put me on the spotlight. Yes. Um, so much more refined from the 650. It is. It, it's world's difference. I think that has more drama though. Like this yeah. doesn't feel as dramatic as the 650. 
Yeah. Like this it, is trying to kill you. Yeah, this is trying to kill you dramatic. That's more like flare, like loud noises. Yeah. Uh, it takes longer for the turbos to spool up. It kicks you a little harder when they do. But holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> is it just insane? I, I'm still like... <laughs> and this is from someone who owns yeah. that. <laughs> it's fast. Holy hell. This is this is fast. This is really fast. And then that's even faster. And this is still faster yet by a lot. I think I even said on the video if you use it, like, I can keep up with Dan just fine, but... <laughs> 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 Alright, YouTube. So here's what I'm going to say. I don't think you can go wrong. Honestly, these are all extraordinarily fun cars. The 650 is probably your best value as far as fun per dollar obviously if you just want insanity go with the 720s and certainly if your wallet can take it you're not going to be sad with that and at the same time if you're more budget minor or if you just kind of want a more entry-level supercar this 570 is still ridiculously fun so pretty much yeah just go buy a mclaren <laughs> and buy from us so if you do want one of our cars send us an email sales at ngsupercars.com and we can get you set up also, go visit our website, normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car, including exhausts for any of these cars. And finally, like, share, and subscribe. We do appreciate you guys can support us. Thank you so much to all of you. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff, so you're going to want to stay tuned. It's going to be sweet. It'll be British.